Shalom, brothers and sisters. This Thursday's thought is on the future of the fellowship. Christine and I had a really good conversation this week, and I want to go over what we talked about with you, but before I do, I want to kind of just give a brief overview of the history of the fellowship. When I was first called to this ministry, I wanted a second witness. Not a sign or anything like that. I just wanted something so that, or someone, so that I knew that what I was doing was actually what the Lord wanted me to do. So the first witness, of course, is the Holy Spirit. I wanted a second witness. And in my conversation with the Lord, I felt impressed by the Spirit to ask that Christine be that second witness. She's my wife, we're equal partners, and she's very wise, so it made sense. And she's naturally very spiritual. And she's really had my back through everything that I've done in this ministry. Now, the first incarnation, when it first popped up, you know, it was a website. People reached out to me. They wanted counseling. They maybe, a lot of them were, were leaving the Salt Lake City Church. And some of them wanted to help. They wanted to get involved. And, and most of the people I was talking to, I mean, they were from Utah, Idaho. I think there might have been some in California, Texas. But Everyone was very, very bitter, very angry. They were still, they, they hadn't gotten over their, their anger with the Salt Lake City Church. And that made things very difficult. And finally, things came to a head when there's this woman that, you know, we were following each other on Twitter and someone that was helping to run the fellowship Twitter account said something very rude. She ended up blocking us, and I I just found that to be completely unacceptable. It was not only against the message of that the fellowship was presenting, but it was against the gospel of Jesus Christ, the way that, that this person was treated. And rather than going to the Lord and going to Christine and figuring things out and you know counseling people and trying to figure out how to fix this, I just shut the website off and that that is my flaw that is my failing i put up information so if anybody wanted to reach out and contact me they could and people so people still did but really there was just a big thing that said if you're looking for a church check out community of christ here's a link to their website and our family also investigated we became latter-day seekers with community of christ and i was actually even talking about being baptized and joining that particular sect and Christine and I sat down, as we do, and we had a, a prayerful conversation. And she said, you know, these are good people. This is a good church. I just don't feel like it's a good fit for us. And so we decided not to join. And I went to the Lord in prayer. And I repented, reopened the fellowship website, and began basically a blog. So that was phase two, was the blog. And I was studying and teaching Kabbalah, and this is where Mormon Kabbalah came from. Six months later, approximately, I get a phone call while I'm at work, and I get, on, in the same day, around the same time, a message on Facebook from someone else who wants to set up a time to talk. And these people are both incredibly excited about what they found with the fellowship. And the next thing we know, we have a council of elders, we have a council of 50, and we are organizing an online church, an actual online congregation. We are having a conference where people attended and voted worldwide in four or five different continents. It was, in my mind, breathtaking. It was the Lord working his miracles in the lives of all of these people. What we came to find, though, was that while we were doing a lot of work, we weren't really accomplishing anything. And I'm just going to say outright, there, there were three, three types of people being called that, that fell into these categories. The first is, to be blunt, there were people who wanted a title and didn't want to work. That happens in every church. The second was people who really wanted to do the work, but they just didn't have the time. They're personal life, their professional life, whatever it was, would get in the way. 
and the third were the people who really wanted to serve, but they didn't know how. They needed to be trained. And there were so many people now that I couldn't do all of this by myself. And so with so many people falling into the first two categories, there really wasn't anybody to train people. So the Council of 50 was dissolved first because they weren't really doing anything. They, they had a desire to do something, some of them. Some of them said, hey, look, you know, I, I want to support you. I want to be in this council. I want to see what's going on, but, but I don't want to do anything. They, they were honest about it, and I appreciate that. And eventually, because nothing was happening, we shut it down. The same thing with the Council of Elders. We had a lot of meetings, but we didn't really accomplish anything. We had services and it was wonderful. It was a wonderful experience. I really enjoyed going to all the services and I really enjoyed learning from the people that we were working with. But at the end of the day, the more I was focusing on all of that, the less time I had for the spiritually homeless, the less time I had for the people who I felt that the Holy Spirit had called me to reach out to. And so, Christine and I had a discussion, a prayerful discussion, and she received a revelation that she and I should back down. Let the rest of the Council of Elders, let the, the third member of the First Presidency, let her take charge and run the Council of Elders, and they can, they can run the fellowship and do the things that need to be done. We'll come back in three months, and we have our plan together for the spiritually homeless. When we came back, they presented us with a letter and that letter had a list of items that they, grievances, things that they'd like to see changed in the fellowship, whatever you want to call it. I took that to the Lord and received the revelation that is now section 125 in Doctrines of the Saints. The First Presidency and I, Christine, Ruth and I, we met together and we went and we put together a response for each of their concerns. And then after we sent that back to them, we met as a council of elders to go through everything that was on that list and decide what we were going to do as an organization. Now, in my mind, it didn't seem very practical because at this point, we went from this you know, large group of people that had just been dwindling down to where really it was just us and the Council of Elders. There were other people who liked what we were doing. They wanted to come to services. They liked watching the videos and reading the articles, but they weren't directly involved and they weren't really talking to us. So after making these changes and, and reorganizing a bit, we, first off, there weren't enough people anymore to be in the Council of Elders. And so as part of the revelation, the Council of Elders was dissolved and that became the Council of 50. And the Lord encouraged us to go out and reach out to a number of people to invite them to be part of the Council of 50. There were some people that seemed interested and people who wanted to get involved. But in the end, it was the same thing where Nothing really was accomplished. Nothing was getting done. And so I backed off. I felt impressed by the spirit to back off. Christine said, hey, just take a break. So I did. And I focused on writing articles. I focused on reaching out and helping people. I focused on some small classes, you know, teaching people in the priesthood, ordaining people, and uh, started working again on the program, a program, to help the spiritually homeless. And I was getting a lot of contact from people asking that we bring back worship services. We bring back the Holy Day services. The thing is, though, that's a lot of work, and I didn't want it to take away from what I felt I was called to do. And so I very selfishly said, look, if you guys want this, then let's do it. You come here. You do it. You put it together. I will do whatever you need me to do. I'll, I'll do my part, but I'm not going to do all this by myself. And I have come to realize and repent of this. We're not doing the monthly services. We're not doing the Holy Day services anymore. But after a lot of pressure, I finally just started doing the Sunday services on my own. And it's not really that hard. It's not that bad. I just do a recording. It's up. People can watch it or not. And those that need it, they have it. It's available for them. And 
I am sorry that it took me so long to put those together. I should have been doing it at least in March when we first originally started talking about doing it. I should not have drugged my feet for so long. And for that, I am truly sorry. So that's where we are today. And now we're moving into the latest version of the fellowship. Christine has decided that she would like to step down and no longer be co-president of the fellowship. She still supports the fellowship. She still believes in what we're doing. But I've mentioned before that we're both introverts. And this is not easy for her. So rather than trying to rely on her for things that she doesn't feel comfortable doing, she is going to remain in the calling of a bishop so that she can still do the financial stuff. She's very good at that. She's better than I am at it. And so, you know, she's there as an advisor and she's, she's there to help us with the finances. That said, that does not make me the president of the fellowship. I will be reverting back to just the first elder because I was the first person to become an elder of the fellowship. That was Joseph Smith's original title. And this is what I feel the Lord is calling us to, I guess, I don't know, address me. I don't know how to say that. Calling me to do, we'll say it like that. One of the things that makes us different as a fellowship is that we're not a traditional church. No one here wants to convert people to this new church. I was talking to a brother just last week and I was telling him, no, stay where you are. You want to come and help? Please do. But you don't have to leave your church to do that. The church you belong to is small and you know, you being there can help it grow. What we need to do is work together as Latter-day Saints. And the thing I love the most about the Council of Elders is we had RLDS, Community of Christ, non-denominational Mormons, Brighamites, uh, Strangites. So we had all this representation, this diversity that really brought together unique ideas. And it was wonderful. I love that. So after praying on this, I've been thinking, you know, I still have people calling me up. I still have people messaging me and they, they want a calling. But we don't work in the same way. This isn't a Dave says something, so everyone's got to go do it. This is Dave is here to help you meet your needs. If you're a pastor for a small community and you need missionary tracks, I can help you make those. You need help, you need to learn how to, or you need someone to make videos for you, I'm here and I can help you with that. You need someone to pray over you, pray with you, I'm here. My job is to facilitate your needs. That's it. So then the question becomes, these people that call up and they say, hey, I want a calling. I want to be this. And even the Holy Spirit tells me, I feel that this person is called to this. And we've got these two witnesses saying this. What actually puts them in that position? What gives them that title? What gives them that authority? And praying on it this week, the inspiration or revelation that I received on that is it's the work that they do. So moving forward, if you feel called to the priesthood and you want to help with the fellowship, if you call up and you talk and we pray together and you feel to be called to be a high priest, high priestess, a deacon, an apostle, whatever it is, that's great. You can give yourself whatever title you want. But what's going to actually give you that title, help you earn that title, is doing the work of that calling. Salvation comes through both grace and works. We accept the grace, and then as moved by the grace, we do the works. It's the same thing with the priesthood. Anybody can be called to be a deacon, teacher, priest, what have you. But if you don't do the work, then you don't really have the call. So that's how we're moving forward. I, as the first elder, am merely here to facilitate. 
And my thought for you is, how can you get more involved? How can you do the labors of love that the Lord has called you to do? We're already at 15 minutes, but I feel impressed to tell you one more thing. Last Sunday, if you watch that service, in the closing prayer, you'll notice I paused a couple of times. When I pray, I seek the Spirit's guidance on what to say in my prayers. And while I was praying, I saw, the Lord showed me in my mind, the part of the Doctrine of Christ video that I made for conference, where it said, Welcome Home. I remember when I made that video, I thought, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't really go with the doctrine of Christ. I don't know why I'm putting this in this video. And I was ready to take it out. And the Lord said, no, this needs to be here. Keep it here. And I didn't understand. But now I do. The Lord told me. He showed me that and he said, call my people home. And you'll notice that in my prayer, it changed. For the longest time, I've been saying, I love you where you are. I understand your hurt. Take your time. Go through whatever it is you need. I'm here for you. And I still am. I don't take any of that back. At the same time, though, we can't be Latter-day Saints living in islands. And when I say islands, I mean the large islands that are the various congregations, the various denominations, the various sects of the Latter-day Saint movements. And I also mean those of us that have fleed those islands and are now on family islands or individual islands by ourselves. There was a time and there is a time where we need to hide and we need to heal. But now the Lord is calling us forward. And that's the message that I will be taking as we move forward in the fellowship of Christ. In section 125, the question was asked, is the Fellowship of Christ a church, a religious movement, an idea, or is it something else altogether? And the Lord said, Behold, O man, the will of your God. The Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship is all of these and more, for it is the very kingdom of God. So I'm asking all of you out there on islands to get out your paddle boats, your canoes, your steamships, get in the water, Stop hiding. We're commanded to love one another. And we do that by our actions. This is a labor of love. And I will continue in this labor until I die or until Christine tells me to shut it all down. Because if the Spirit tells her to stop this, it's, it's all going off. By two witnesses. I don't do this out of the desire of my own heart. I don't have a desire to do this. I've talked about that before. I'm only doing this because I love the Lord and he asked me to do him a favor. And so here I am. Now I'm telling you, the Lord loves you. He needs you. And he's asking you to do him a favor. That favor may just be showing up, just being there. That favor may be a ministry. But God needs you. The Latter-day Saint movement needs you. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, well, yes, I will always be teaching the law of love. I'll be adding that to, I will be adding to that this message. It's time to come home. Welcome home. So that's my Thursday thought for you. Are you ready to come home? Are you ready to be Zion? Are you ready to do the works of the Lord, whether they be simple or complex, to further his kingdom here upon the earth? That question and that thought I leave with you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.